So to wrap up our um, analysis of government policies related to unemployment, we're going to study um, unemployment insurance. So unlike um, wage policy, so minimum wage or changes in payroll tax and public employment, unemployment insurance cannot and is not directly um, designed to reduce unemployment and to bring unemployment to its efficient level. Instead, unemployment insurance is designed to improve the situation of unemployed workers, to, to make uh, the situation of the unemployed workers uh, less bad. Because of course, in reality, when people lose their jobs, they lose um, their income, and therefore, you know, they are not able um, to afford the same standard of living as when they were um, employed. And so that big drop in standard of living from a social perspective, it's very costly. Something that we hadn't really considered before. And so unemployment insurance is here to make sure that when you lose your job and you lose your income, your standard of living don't drop too much. So that's, that's the goal, it's to make the situation of the unemployed uh, less bad. So in that sense, we call it a passive labor market policy. Passive just because it's not a policy designed to change the unemployment rate directly. It's a, a policy designed to improve the situation of unemployed workers. Um, so, before we start, a couple of words about the uh, U unemployment insurance, so, which I often call um, UI uh, for short. A few words about the uh, UI system in the US, just so that you know how things are organized. There are, I think, um, three characteristics of the UI system that are um, interesting. Well, first of all, the level, well, so first of all, um, not all workers uh, who are unemployed are eligible um, to UI. So there are some eligibility rules. To receive UI. Um, so for instance, you need to have worked before. So let's say if you're a student, and um, you enter the labor market as an unemployed, you cannot get a UI. You need to have previous work experience and you need to have uh, basically paid taxes into the UI system to be able to be eligible to UI. Uh, also, if you quit, you're not eligible to UI, you need to have been uh, laid off. Uh, if you're not laid off, you're, you're, you know, you're not going, if it's a voluntary separation, you're not going to be eligible. Um, so there are a bunch of rules like that, so that um, not uh, everybody is eligible. Even if you've worked before, actually, you also need to have worked long enough and you need to have earned su uh, sufficient amount of money uh, to be eligible to UI. Um, and something that also disqualifies you, so I said if you quit, you're not eligible to UI. Um, and also if you're, uh, if you're dismissed for cause, you know, if you lose your job because you did something bad in the firm, you're also not eligible. So you need to have lost your job through no fault uh, of your own, okay? Um, so there are some uh, rules like that, and you know, the rules vary a little bit by state. You can, um, you can have a look at it if that's of interest. Um, secondly, so there are some rules. Secondly, there is some, uh, once you're unemployed, you receive some benefits um, every month. And so um, there's a question of what is the level of benefit that you're going to receive. And um, the level of benefit is usually captured by what we call the replacement rate. Uh, and the replacement rate is usually around 50%. So what does that mean? It means that benefits, the uh, benefits that you receive, they are roughly 50% of your past wage. So that's how uh, the generosity of UI benefits is calculated. So it's not a, you know, a fixed amount, but it's a fraction of your previous earning. Okay, and usually that replacement rate is at uh, 50%. And in addition, that's kind of a detail, but there is also a cap uh, on, on benefits. So for instance, you know, if you work in of finance and make a couple of millions of years and you lose your job, you're not going to receive 50% of a couple of millions. You're not go going to receive UI benefits of one million 
<laughs> you know, one million a year. Um, I think in many states, uh, UI benefits are capped at, you know, something like $3,000 uh, a month, okay, um, roughly. Okay, so that's one thing. That's the generosity of UI, which is uh, roughly 50% with uh, an upper bound on the benefits. Another thing that's interesting about the program is that when you get UI benefits, you don't get them uh, forever. Uh, UI benefits have a finite duration. And the rule for that duration are uh, kind of complex, but also uh, quite interesting. So the, usually the duration for UI benefits is half a year. Uh, that is 26 weeks. Usually du UI duration is measured in, in weeks. Um, that's 26 weeks. What's very interesting about the UI program in the US is actually it's the only policy that I'm aware of that um, adjusts itself automatically over the business cycle. Um, and in fact, this is quite nice because um, as we'll see when we when we talk about optimal unemployment insurance, actually it is a it is you know theory, economic theory suggests that your UI benefits should move systematically over the business cycle and indeed in the US that's what happens. Um, and so what happens is that the duration of benefits move systematically over the business cycle. And um, the duration is actually counter-cyclical. So counter-cyclical that means it's long in uh, bad times and the duration is short in good times. So in good times, the usual duration um, holds, so you have 26 weeks, but as the unemployment rate goes up, um, the duration of the benefits is extended. Just to give you um, to give you an idea, so the way it works is that um, the system looks at the state unemployment rate, and when the state unemployment rate crosses certain thresholds, the duration of UI benefits in that state are extended. So, for instance, usually when state um, unemployment rate, or which we already know small u, is above six point five percent, that is the first threshold, then the duration of benefit. of UI benefits increases to um, 39 weeks. So it increases by 50% compared to the standard duration. And then there is a, a second threshold when things get really bad. So when the state unemployment rate crosses 8%, um, the duration increases to 46 weeks. Okay, uh, and then, you know, then what happens sometimes when things are really, really bad, so for instance, there is a great recession, then sometimes the federal governments uh, vote a law to, on top of this, extend the duration of benefits even further. So for instance, during the great recession, uh, the stimulus package that was passed by the Obama administration extended the duration of uh, UI benefits to uh, 99 weeks, so four, you know, about four times um, the standard duration in states in which the unemployment rate crossed 8.5%, but it, that was most of the 50 uh, US states. Okay? Uh, so sometimes you also have additional um, federal extensions. So just to say that it's, it's quite an interesting policy uh, UI, uh, and it's, it's unlike 
other policies in that it, it's um, adjusted automatically over the business cycle. Okay, so this is the institutional context for UI. So now um, let's just see how we can model unemployment insurance in a matching model, how we can insert it into the matching model, and what are the effects of unemployment insurance. 